Okay, today we need to talk about um, states of matter and changes of state. And whenever we're talking about the states of matter in chemistry, we're going to focus on three, solid, liquid, and gas. And we've already talked about this, but solids have definite shape, uh, definite volume, and they typically cannot be compressed. Whereas a liquid will take the shape of its container, it has a fixed volume, cannot be compressed, and a gas will take the shape of its container, um, has an indefinite volume, or will take the volume of its container, and it can be compressed, okay? And we have spent 4B talking about gases. Now we're going to talk primarily about solids and liquids, okay? And we're all, it's still, but it, we're still going to refer back to the kinetic molecular theory, and the two things that are going to be most important are going to be the temperature of the materials, as well as the, um, which is directly related to kinetic energy, as well as the attractive forces that are holding them together. And these two factors are going to be huge in terms of understanding this. Okay, now with a liquid, we already mentioned, has a definite volume and it takes the shape of its container. Um, we've already also defined a liquid as being fluid, meaning that substances will, um, materials will, the mo molecules rather, will actually slide past one another. Okay, so definite volume and it will take the shape of its container. So they're loose enough to slide past each one another, but still attracted to one another enough to not escape or turn into a gas. Now for the properties of liquids, we can understand, still understand it by applying the kinetic molecular theory, as well as the motion of the particles, okay, as well as again the attractive forces. And in other words, attractive forces are just what is pulling these things together, okay. Now, again, we already mentioned this, but fluids are both gases and liquid phases, and they are substances that will take the shape of their container because the particles can slide past one another, okay? And with liquids, the attraction is loose enough to let them slide, but not let, let them get away from each other, and gases, the attraction is that much less that they can get away from each other. Okay, now, if we compare liquids to gases in terms of motion, uh, of particles, liquids will have less because they have lower kinetic energy. Okay, so less kinetic energy, the forces hold them together and they can still be attracted to one another. Empty space, liquids will have much less since the particles are that much closer together. Okay, and if we also compare their density, remember gases have extremely low density. Um, liquids are thousand, about a thousand times denser than gases and again this is just due to the close arrangement of the particles because density is mass over unit volume, and so if you have uh, more mass packed into that volume, it's going to have a higher density. Liquids are only about 10% less dense than, so than solids. Um, at the same temperature, different liquids may still have largely different densities, and one of the best examples I can give you on this is oil and water. If you pull out um, the Italian dressing, from the fridge, you will see the separation, and that's what I'm showing you here, is that even though all of these things have, are liquids, okay, the ones at the bottom have the highest density, okay, more matter per volume, whereas the ones up top have a less, lesser density, okay, so these ones up here are going to rise to the top because they have less mass per volume these down here will um, sink to the bottom because they have a larger mass per volume. So you still can have a lot of variability among densities even through liquids. Okay, now if we look at compressibility, well, if the liquids are that closer together, they're not going to be able to compress. And diffusion is the same thing. Um, for diffusion, liquids will move slower, so they will have a lower particle velocity, so therefore they cannot mix as well. Um, and again, this is all due to that attraction between particles. So if we think about it, if you think about a liquid, if you were to increase its temperature, the rate of diffusion can increase simply because if you increase the temperature, you increase the kinetic energy, so therefore you're going to increase the motion of those molecules. Um, a lot of similarities, but things that really come back into play for these things. Okay, now there are some unique properties of liquids. The first one is surface tension. Okay, now with surface tension, what you end up with is that a force that pulls adjacent parts of the liquid surface together, which decreases the surface area. Now that sounds formal and fancy, um, and we've seen this on a pretty reasonable 
paper scale, but this is why certain things will float. Okay, if you put paper clips on top of water, uh, they will float because of the surface tension that's at the surface of the water. Um, this is also why water will form droplets, because all of the molecules that are on the outside of that water particle are pulled together, which is going to decrease the surface area of the material. And again, this is why we get droplets, and this is why some lighter um, organisms can climb on top of, of the water. Okay, and again, this is just at a molecular level. Um, particles in the bulk of the liquid are pulled in all directions by the intermolecular forces, whereas particles in the surface are pulled from below but not above. And so this unbalanced force is surface tension, which results in these forces being stronger. Same reason if you've ever jumped off the high dive and it's hurt really bad. <laughs> That's because all of these particles right at the top are being held together with stronger force. And so you've got to kind of break through that force in order to get into the bottom of the pool. Okay, one other unique property is what's called capillary action. And we've seen this when we've measured the graduated cylinder. This is the attraction of the surface of liquid to the surface of a solid. And this is why, when we read the graduated cylinder, we have to read the meniscus, because the liquid particles that are out here are a little bit more attracted to the solid, so they're pulling them up on the edge just a little bit. Same thing's going on over here, and so we get this little dip where they're not attracted in the middle, so that's why we have to read the bottom of the meniscus when we read a graduated cylinder. Okay, now if we switch gears to solids a little bit, solids, as we've already mentioned, have definite volume and definite shape, and the particles are in fixed positions. Okay, they're in a fixed position, meaning that the particles themselves cannot slide past one another. So that's why we do not classify these as um, a fluid particle. So if I go back here, this is just, oh, it's going to lose it there, but the only movement in solid is vibration. Okay, so you have these particles that are in a fixed position. They're not moving, but they do have a slight vibration from side to side. Okay, and that is just where they motion. And again, if another comparison of the three states side by side is that in a solid, the powder particles are extremely packed tightly together. With a liquid, the bonds between the particles begin to loosen uh, because they have increased kinetic energy. And then lastly, there essentially are no bonds or no attractive forces. And the particles are free to move wherever they want. So again, we're going to emphasize this in a concept map, but it all will come down to kinetic energy and the forces of attraction. And kinetic energy, again, is directly related to temperature. So they go hand in hand. Okay, now with changes of state, um, these are things that we've talked about, but that matter may undergo physical changes to go from one state to another by either losing or gaining heat. Okay, and as a reminder, um, when something loses heat, it is an exothermic process. When something gains heat, it is an endothermic process. Now, if we think about melting. Okay, melting is when we have the change of a solid going to a liquid. Okay, which we mostly know, but this is the addition of heater. It's an endothermic. And again, why do we need that? Well, the heat is required to increase the kinetic energy of the particles to overcome the attractive forces. Now, the melting point is a temperature at which a solid becomes a liquid. Freezing, okay, is going to be a situation where we go from a liquid to a solid, not just our response to temperature change. Um, this is also an exothermic process. Again, heat must be removed so that kinetic energy of the particles can decrease and the attractive forces can pull the particles together. Uh, the freezing point at the temperature at which a liquid becomes a solid, it's the same temperature as the melting point. The only thing that changes is the direction. If you're going from a solid to a liquid, then we refer to it as the melting point. If we're going from a liquid to a solid, then we refer to it as the freezing point. Okay, so it's just a perspective change. Now, vaporization is when we go from a liquid to a gas. It is endothermic, and there are two types. Um, boiling is with bubbles, and evaporation is without bubbles. Both of them involve going from a liquid um, to a vapor or to a gas. One of them is going to involve bubbles, and one of them won't. And then we have the opposite condensation, which is where you have going from a gas to a liquid, and that is exothermic because it is losing heat. 
get two types of vaporization. Boiling has bubbles, evaporation, no bubbles. Okay, now with the boiling point, boiling point is the temperature where a liquid will boil to become a gas, and the liquid particles are able to escape the atmospheric pressure and enter the gas phase. That's about the best way I know how to describe it, is that when you're talking about the boiling point, um, they finally have enough kinetic energy to overcome the attractive forces between those particles and go into um, that situation. So this is what I'm just showing you here, that water in the gas state escapes the liquid, um, they get enough kinetic energy in order to enter the gas phase. Okay, last thing we'll mention here is boiling point in cooking. Um, if you lower the atmospheric pressure, the lower the boiling point of a substance. So what does that mean is that cooking at high altitudes, liquids will boil at low, lower temperatures, so it will take longer to cook. And then on the flip side, um, that's why you have high altitude directions on baking baking mixes, brownie mixes, cake mix mixes, because they will have different requirements for those. Uh, the molar heat or enthalpy of vaporization is a term we have to be familiar with, and it is the energy required to vaporize one mole of a liquid at its boiling point at constant temperature. And that sounds ugly, but remember vaporize is just going from a liquid um, to a gas. Evaporation is endothermic, and again, it's a measure of the attraction between molecules. So this would be an intrinsic property, or sorry, an intrinsic um, or intensive property, meaning it does not depend on how much is present because it gives you the value of mole and it allows you to compare things side by side. So for example, if you had a stronger attraction, you would have a larger molar heat of enthalpy or enthalpy of vaporization, and if it was less of an attraction, that number would be smaller. Water is very large. Okay, and lastly, some other terms to know, molar heat of fusion is the energy required to melt one mole of a solid at the solid's melting point. Um, melting is also called fusion or fusing. I think of it as putting the molecules back together to form a solid, so that's how I remember fusion. Um, we've already talked about sublimation, which is where you go from directly from a solid to a gas, and we've also talked about deposition, where you go directly from a gas to a solid. Dry ice being an example. Okay, deposition, where you go from a gas to a solid, dry ice being the example of sublimation, and frost being the example of deposition. Um, in the last three slides, we will talk about in class next time.